Emily Dickinson was the original ayahuasca bro. Okay, no, that's not what's going on in this poem, but I had to get it out there. We Never Know How High We Are by Emily Dickinson is a poem that I think offers some interesting talking points, but the one th- I will be getting at one thing in particular today. Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for another poetry discussion, which will come to us from Emily Dickinson, and in as much, it will appear in two separate playlists here on the channel, number one being the poetry discussion playlist, and number two, the Emily Dickinson playlist. The poem in question reads as such. We never know how high we are till we are called to rise, and then, if we are true to plan, our statues touch the skies. The heroism we recite would be a daily thing, did not ourselves the cubits warp, for fear to be a king. This is reminiscent of one of those, I'm a sucker for the motivational stuff on YouTube, those kind of pointless videos that have mashed together video that has nothing to do with the audio. The audio is inspirational quotes. One of them is that our greatest fear is not that we are not good enough. Our greatest fear is how powerful we are. Now, in reality, kind of that doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, But when you're running a mile as fast as you can and you feel you're going to throw up, Hearing the words, our biggest fear is how strong we can be, it it, it gets you going still, right? This poem, kind of reminiscent of that. The heroism we recite would be a daily thing, did not ourselves the cubits warp, for fear to be a king. Now, the real thing that I want to talk about here has to do with one word selection, this right here. Cubits. When was the last time that you measured something in cubits? Probably around 4,000 years ago. This is an interesting word choice, especially when we are putting it so close to king. Cubit is something really that pops up in the Bible. Even by Emily Dickinson's time, Emily Dickinson lived a little while ago. Even by Emily Dickinson's time, cubit was not a unit of measurement. It was a unit of, have you read the Bible? Emily Dickinson's relationship with religion, if not faith in general, was tenuous at best. I think that anyone who gave us as many poems as Emily Dickinson bequeathed upon the world, 1,775, some of your real life struggles are going to be in there, and one of her real life struggles seemed to be with greater power. Is there a greater power? If there is a greater power, why does that greater power let things happen, etc., etc.? In the world of the Bible, hero meant something a little different. The hero wasn't Captain America, wasn't Superman, wasn't Batman. There was no real code of ethics. The hero was the guy that won. The hero... You can read Greek literature. You can read the Roman fables. The heroes were victors. That's what it was. David was a hero. David spent one one lazy summer, I believe it was a morning, on his roof, surveying the land and saw 
a nice looking naked young woman who was the wife of one of his generals, I believe it was, Bathsheba. And David decided to send her husband off to war, surely to die, so that he could have that man's wife. That was David. David and Goliath, the king David, that was him. That was a hero. Those were the victors, not the most righteous. Hero battle was a real thing. Hero battle was when two armies would march together and the leaders of those armies would come to the middle, the middle ground, the meeting ground, and say, hey, we're going to fight this battle or are your best guy and my best guy going to go at it? My guy wins, we win. Your guy wins, you win. That's what a hero was. That was hero battle. This poem, conjuring up cubits, conjuring up the king, is putting us in that mindset for what it means to be a hero. So let's read it again. Not with the idea of a hero being the most ethical and moral among us, but the idea that the hero is the one who wins. We never know how high we are till we are called to rise. And then, if we are true to plan, our statues touch the skies. The heroism we recite would be a daily thing, did not ourselves the cubits warp for fear to be a king. Now it sounds a little different, doesn't it? Because the hero king is not the same thing in the ancient context. What is a good king? You, this, this comes up a lot in fantasy writing. If you were told that the king has a long gray beard, I mean, this goes back all the way to Beowulf, really. If you were told the king has a long gray beard, you know he's a good king. Because he's old and he has known peace. Well, how do you know peace in the world? It's not through being the nicest guy. It's probably through being the scariest. So this idea of the king transcending from hero to king. Well, a, hero, a king is just a hero with a few extra responsibilities, right? Or is there an added ethical virtue to it? If you're the king and you're too rough a guy, likely you're going to get shanked. If you are a warrior and you are a hero and you're too rough a guy, the guys leave you alone because they know that you being that rough guy, the next time we are led into battle, I want that rough guy on my side. I don't want him screwing with me right now, but I want him on my side. So when we march across town to take over whatever village is there, man, I need him. He's a jerk, sure. But if I sit, you know, on the opposite side of camp, he'll be a jerk to someone else. It's not the same way with a king. It's not the same way with a king. These little bits of wisdom from Emily Dickinson, they never cease to amaze me. I mean, you could take this poem a thousand ways. You could take this poem on surface level and just be completely inspired by what, what our speaker here is saying, by what Emily Dickinson has put on the page, that there is in all of us this idea of the hero, and we don't know what is in there. We don't know how high we are until we are called to rise. I mean, just... 
How beautiful a portion of the poem is that? That's all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. If you find yourself here by chance but not design, consider hitting the subscribe button to stick around for more literary goodness in the future. And as always, I hope to have you back for the next one.